The Falling Cylinder A thin, light string is wrapped around the outer rim of a uniform hollow cylinder of mass 4.75 kg having inner and outer radii as shown in figure. The cylinder is then released from rest. Part A. How far must the cylinder fall before its center, of ma uh, its center is moving at 6.66 meters per second? Part B. If you just drop this cylinder without any string, how fast would its center be moving when it had fallen the distance in part A? Part C. Why do you get two different answers when the cylinder falls the same distance in both cases? <clears throat> Since we will be dealing with rotations about the center of mass of a hollow cylinder, we should start with determining the moment of inertia. So we take a mass element here. You can see that I have a radial distance r from the central axis. So dr would be one side of it. Then I would have r d theta uh, where this angle is. Uh, is d theta and then I would have dz uh, the, to account for the distance on the z axis. So the volume of this element would be r dr d theta dz. So the mass of this element dm would be rho dv, the mass density times uh, the volume. And what would be the mass density? It's the total mass, capital M, divided by the volume. Now, it's a hollow cylinder, so the volume is uh, the area pi r2 square minus r1 square multiplied with h. So that's the volume of this region. Okay, so because we had an outer radius uh, r2, 35 centimeters, and inner radius r1, 20 centimeters. So that's basically what I have here. The outer radius is r2. The inner radius is R1. Okay, so uh, that's the mass density multiplied with the volume R dr d theta dz. So I center of mass will be equal to integral R square dm where r is the distance from the uh, axis of rotation to the volume element, uh, the mass element. So it's going to be rho multiplied with the integral. Z will go from 0 to h. Uh, the theta will go from 0 to 2 pi. And the radius will go from radial distance r1 to r2. So the distance from the uh, rotation axis, z-axis, to the mass element is r. So it's going to be r square r dr d theta dz. So this will give us uh, rho times. Now, if we perform the uh, R integration, we will have R cubed dr. R cubed dr integral will give us R to 4 over 4. So we will have between R2 and R1, R2 to 4 minus R1 to 4 divided by 4. The theta integral will give us 2 pi. The z integral will give us an h. So if we substitute for our rho here, m, capital M divided by pi, r2 square minus 
R1 squared times H multiplied with the result of our integral R2 to 4 minus R1 to 4 over 4 times 2 pi H we can see that we will have uh, the pi's cancelling out the heights cancelling out and then we have this 2 making this 4 uh, 2 and furthermore uh, for r2 to 4 minus r1 to 4 we can write here r2 to 4 minus r1 to 4 is r2 square minus r1 square times r2 square plus r1 square so r2 square minus r1 squares will cancel as well so we will be left with capital m r1 square plus r2 square divided by 2 so that's the uh, moment of inertia of a hollow cylinder with outer radius r2 inner radius r1 for rotations about the central axis now let's answer part a our final uh, speed for the center of mass is 6.66 meters per second and that will correspond to a final angular speed omega final times r2 which is omega final times r2 is 35 centimeters in this case that's the outer radius so 35 times 10 to minus 2. now we have the cylinder released from rest initial kinetic energy is zero the final kinetic energy will have a rotation component one half i center of mass omega final square plus translational kinetic energy of the center of mass one half m v center of mass final squared initial potential energy is capital m g h final potential energy is zero okay and in this process we only have conservative forces in action so the change in the mechanical energy of the system is zero joules we have conservation of energy okay because we're under the influence of the uh, conservative forces okay so the change in kinetic energy must be equal to minus the change in potential energy the change in potential energy would be zero minus mgh minus the change in potential energy would be mgh and this is equal to uh, one half i center of mass and for i center of mass we substitute capital m r1 square plus r2 square divided by 2 1 half i center of mass omega final square plus 1 half m v center of mass final square and you will see that these m's will uh, cancel and if we isolate h here h will become r1 square plus r2 square um, v center of mass final square over r2 square which is going to give us 4 r2 square g so for omega final i substitute v center of mass final divided by r2 and plus we have v center of mass final squared divided by 
to G because I have taken G to the right hand side to isolate H. So this gives us in V center of mass final squared divided by 2G parentheses 1 plus R1 square plus R2 square over 2 R2 square. And we can rewrite this as V center of mass final squared divided by 2G 1 plus 1 over 2 parentheses r2 square over r2 square is 1 plus r1 square over r2 square now we can substitute the numbers here the final center of mass speed will be 6.66 so 6.66 squared divided by 2g 2 times 9.8 and then we have 1 plus 1 over 2 parentheses 1 plus r1 was uh, 20 centimeters r2 is 35 centimeters so uh, 20 squared divided by 35 squared and this gives us our final answer 3.76 meters so it falls 3.76 meters to reach this final uh, center of mass speed now in part b of the problem uh, we basically uh, have uh, no string and it's falling the same distance now what will be the final uh, center of mass uh, speed that's what we will find so uh, without the string we would get no torque why because the tension on the string is applying a torque causing rotation so there would be no torque due to the tension and no rolling okay so uh, we will have the only remaining force since the only remaining force mg mg goes through the center uh, so it has no perpendicular distance uh, with respect to the pivot so would have no torque effect uh, with respect to the center center of mass so in that case we will have conservation of energy delta u is equal to minus delta k and uh, this will give us um, the change in potential energy uh, minus the change in potential energy is mgh uh, and the change in kinetic energy is one half m v center of mass final prime squared so that's the situation we have here m's cancel so we find that the primed final uh, speed would be its square is equal to 2gh so it would be equal to v center of mass final prime square root 2gh so if we plug in the numbers here it would be square root 
2 times 9.8 times 3.76 the answer we have found in part a this gives us a final speed of 8.59 meters per second now they fall the same distance in part a and part b but the final speed is larger in the second case without the string so how do we account for this fact uh, that's the question in part c all right so without the string the potential energy turns into so it's going to be converted to translational kinetic energy and that's the only thing that happens here you can see this potential energy turning into translational kinetic energy uh, however, since with the string part of this energy goes to rotational kinetic energy the final speed of the center of mass is less is is going to be less compared to part B, the no string case. So it's just a matter of a conversion of energy. So in this case, we have uh, with the string, we have a torque effect due to this tension. Tension applies a torque. So there will be a rolling motion as it comes down and uh, the potential energy will turn into rotational kinetic energy uh, uh, plus the translational kinetic energy of the center of mass. So if we have the same distance uh, for this cylinder to fall without any torque acting on the cylinder, uh, with, without the string, we have MGH turns into translational kinetic energy only. Therefore, this is a more efficient energy conversion process, giving us a larger speed without uh, the string, even if they fall the same distance in two cases.